Yeah, yeah, it's Chinese. And yeah, this is Chinese. It means God's son. Not Chinese, Japanese actually. What Chinese? Hmm? Chinese. Yeah, I used to. That why like Japanese so you don't have it in both. No, I I liked I, I had I had a lot of manga comics then. No, I have not. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, you know what go away. What good you don't feel good? So I'm saying never go by choice. Is it not by choice? By choice. See this man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Childhood memory. Um, well, um, I think when I lost my father, um, that was, that was back in, been a long time. It's been over, been over 16 years now. And growing up, um, I grew up in a family of artists. My dad was an architect, um, a businessman, and I used to see him in his, um, in his office, you know, create these amazing sketches, buildings, and all those stuff. Um, I wanted to be like him. Every child, every male child wants to be like their father. Like they look, is a, you know, a father figure you look up to. Um, but then, I wasn't the best in the family, to be honest. Um, my elder brothers, they were better than me in drawing. So that really got me really jealous sometimes. Well, it's good to be jealous sometimes because sometimes if you can, you know, transform that jealousy into something positive, I think it's an edge you, that you have over your um, your peers. So I worked my ass off. Like, I kept drawing my uh, Mickey Mouse, my Tom and Jerry figures um, up until when I lost my father and it really hit me really hard, man. So there's this painting my sister commissioned a, pa a painter to make. Um, his name is um, Eche Mubun Naya. Yeah, um, it's a family, a portrait of my mom and my dad. So, man, when I saw that portrait, man, I knew I wanted to be an artist for the rest of my life. Like, how can somebody paint something so glorious like the painting is just I still have the painting in my house. Um it's it's part of my personal collection now. Until today I draw inspiration from that painting. Um I wanted to be able to make um something close to that painting. So every day I keep drawing, making copies of the work, and before you know it, I started making drawings for myself painting for myself and I think that's that was the moment I knew I wanted to be an artist like I knew that this is what I wanted to do in my life yeah wow <laughs> man, that one, you call me off guard that one, man. in three words man I should describe my, my love for art Mm, three words. Um, wow. Uh, well, I think we are going to be here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't think of any word at all to like describe my love for art. Um, okay, let me say the first one. Um, immortality. Um, aesthetics. And satisfaction. Should, should I break it down for you? <laughs> All right. Immortality. Um, I feel I feel I can be immortal while I'm painting or after making my paintings, because they'll they'll be here years after I'm gone. So that makes me immortal. Like if if an artist calls you and say, "Hey, model for me, please," I want to paint you, man. That's the that's a big privilege, because they are trying to make you like a vampire, like you're never dying. 
So they are trying to make you immortal. So immortality. Um, what was the second one? Aesthetics, man. The beauty of it, man. Like the colors, the composition, the techniques, the application, the mistakes, the, you know, the mess you make in your studio to create something really, really beautiful. And the last one, satisfaction. Man, it's so satisfactory. Like after making any painting, um, showing the painting to the world, being appreciated, being celebrated out there, um, making money, it's, it's really satisfactory. Um, sometimes, um, sometime last year, um, I was, that was when I had my, my first child. I think then I had to pause paintings and, you know, reevaluate my life because I have a little one to look after. I have, um, a family to take care of before it was just me. I wake up, paint you know, go out, get lunch, dinner, whatever, come back home. But now I have like people I have to like take care of that depend on me. So um, it's really hard to like balance the whole situation. Sometimes you're not selling paintings. Sometimes, you know, you don't have shows. Sometimes you have a certain height. You, I'm, I'm being real with you right now. You don't always sell your paintings. It's, it's okay. It's okay if you don't always make sales. You sell at some point, but if by venture you are not making sales at that moment, things aren't working well for you in the studio. I've experienced it. A lot of artists experience what we call artist block. So it's 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 there. Like you don't know what to create. Um, you can't think of ways to you know create your your work um maybe there's this exhibition you've been wanting to uh, participate in and you send your portfolio and you get rejected um you get rejected from going to residencies being rejected is part of life like you don't always get what you want but i think when you have a reason why you do what you do um you have like for me my family is like the reason why I go on my son because I want to provi provide like the life I never had for, for him. So he's like the reason I keep pushing. Um, I have, I have a picture of my family in my studio, just right where I keep my, my, my colors. So each time I want to pick any colors to paint, I see the picture of my family. And to me, they are my biggest motivation. So you need something to motivate you each time to do the work, to put in the work. It's really important. Hmm. That's a strong one though. Um, you know, let's talk about how I create. Um, there's the metaphorical side of my creating paintings and there's the actual side of creating paintings um like my thought process when i create my works they mostly speak to me first before they can even speak to other people like um my current exhibition um showing with blue mat lagos um uh, it's a gallery um located in vi um, the show is created by Ugoma Ibilia, um, a very good friend of mine. She's also the owner of the gallery. Um, there's a painting in the show titled um, The Summoning Over a Spilled Wine. So it's a painting of a man playing a harp, summoning a deity into the work. Um, over the spilled wine. Actually, in the painting, you see where the, the spilled wine, the cup is right beside his feet. He actually spilled the wine himself. 
but he was actually summoning this deity in order to punish or find out who spilled his wine. So um, I asked myself, why would you summon um, a, a spirit to punish somebody else over something you did? So don't you think sometimes we are like the cause of our own problems? So um, that's, that's the part where I ask myself questions while I paint. And I try to like see the same message I want to pass to the audience while I paint. Sometimes I just draw inspiration from my, my own thoughts. Sometimes um, questions I ask myself day to day, um, things happening around me. Um, so I would want people to feel a sense of you know, self-awareness, um, to feel connected to my work, to ask themselves the same questions I ask myself while I make the paintings. Um, I would want people to step back, just relax, look at the work, enjoy the aesthetic beauty of it, the well-composed paintings, the colors, um, and also try to get a message from it. You know, art speaks to us in different ways. You just need to sit down, look at the painting, reflect on the colors, reflect on, you know, the composition, ask yourself questions like, why is this painting? Uh, why is the eyes like this? Or why is he painting the floor this way? Those things are what the artist wants you to see in the work. And also to understand that in life, there's beauty in everything in life. So... I feel I feel that's my my main goal when I make any work is to pass that knowledge to people to ask themselves questions to sit back and think about life. It is okay to be emotional about things. That's just who you are as humans. That's 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 a very deep question, man. Um, to me. Personally, I feel like the art community in Nigeria um, recently stepped up their game. I, I can see amazing gallery shows, even here in Lagos, um, Abuja, the Art X, Art Fair. Um, these, are, these are ways that they provide opportunities for younger artists and emerging artists. But... What I really feel that where they need to improve is um, actually giving real opportunity to the younger artists to exhibit some of their painting because most galleries are still um, trying to show works of um, people they feel are, you know, well-known in the art community. And it, it can be quite depressing for other artists because you want to put your work out there and galleries are meant to help artists to, you know, share their works to the world. And when you are not, when you don't have that opportunity, you seem to lose um, focus, you lose passion. And that's not what we artists want. You want to be able to reach out to a gallery with a well-organized um, portfolio and have that same opportunity to exhibit your paintings and make a living out of, you know, what you do. So I feel I feel they should, um, the, the community itself should have more um, exhibitions for upcoming artists, um, more art fairs, um, you know, more seminars. Seminars are very important because you might know how to do the work, know how to make the paintings, but, you know, the art market is another different ball game. It's like going to school to study business. And when you come out with a degree, you need to actually have experience on in the field to actually make money with your um, business certificate. So I feel, I feel the art market is... A subject that needs to be well, you know, educated to people so they can actually understand what it means to, okay, make paintings passionately and also make money 
from your work because if you are not making unless you have something else you're doing and you're just painting for the love of it but if you really want to make money from your work you need to understand how the art market works so i think these are some of the things these galleries have years and years of experience from selling paintings auctioning works commissioning paintings so i feel they are in best position to hold this seminar to educate every young artist out there and also the um the masters i, I like calling them masters because they've mastered the craft of making the work and also selling the work so i think they should be able to like make themselves more available more accessible to other people like i don't see reason why um someone will reach out to you on instagram or or facebook or uh, whatever platform they reach, reach reach out to you on and ask you a very important question now some people can just ask questions that doesn't make sense but when you read a question of from someone who you know this person wants to be on the right path i don't see if there's a i don't see a reason why you shouldn't you know give them a very reasonable answer that will help them you know elevate to the next level in their career so i just feel everyone needs to be more flexible and more accommodating so i feel that's the way they can impact on you know the younger generation and artists peace <laughs> <laughs> man this was fun man <laughs>